Welcome, welcome, welcome into the studio. Our State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Kathy Hoffman. It's great to have you back, Ms. Hoffman. Thank you so much for having me. And the last time you were here, Pamela, you were suffering with some back issues. So this is your first time meeting Kathy This Hoffman. is my first time. Well, I appreciate feel like you I'm bringing in. good Thank people you. together. I like that. Well, we're, okay. doing, we're doing a monthly with you because we know that education is such a critical issue in the yeah. state of Arizona. And we've got a lot of moving parts. As people try to fix some of the problems that have been created and, in my opinion, create some new ones all on their own. Now, last time you were here, you... You were you were freshly minted. You were new to the job. We joked about still trying to figure out where the bathrooms are down at the office, right? Critical, Didn't have the cards detail. printed yet, yeah. right? You've been in the job now for a couple of months. You, you're you're absorbing. You're up to speed. I'm going to assume as the superintendent of a public instruction. I'm curious as to what you see as your biggest challenge, and maybe that is. I'll put it this way. Something you didn't realize when you were running uh, for office, but now that you're in the office, you're like, oh, this needs attention pronto. Well, I'd say the, the biggest surprise to me, I have to say first, is during my campaign, I had so many people say to me, why would you even want this job? It's it's just an administrative job. You have no power. It's all the legislature and the governor that holds all the power. And I have been very pleasantly surprised that that's not the case, that it's not just an administrative job, and that the field has desperately needed someone to take charge and lead our education system. And I've had just such success meeting with legislators, meeting with the governor, building coalitions. And um, I think that the the whole uh, field has really been craving that type of collaboration to solve some of these really big education issues that we're facing right now. So I, I have to say I'm very pleasantly surprised on, on that about that. Okay, so we, we have some big education issues that we are facing. So as you are in charge, as you are leading, and as you are building those coalitions, what have you identified as the biggest challenges? Uh, where to even start? We do we have some big challenges. Of course, the teacher shortage has been a, one of the biggest issues that we're addressing right now. So uh, t- one example of how we're addressing that and building a coalition is we're working on partnering with several people, including ASU, including rural educators, as well as people from various counties. And we're building this coalition because while um, while we have a te- teacher shortage statewide, we are seeing that our rural communities are hit the hardest by this shortage. And while we're doing everything we can to improve prove that issue by attracting and retaining those teachers. Uh, the way I see the issue is we, we also can't let this generation of students go without quality education. And so, for example, these students that don't have a calculus teacher or a physics teacher or other high quality or high level types of curriculum, what we're doing with this rural schools network is coming together to say, how can we use technology and video conferencing? And, and how, so if a student doesn't have a calculus teacher, let's say in Payson, how, but they have one in Sholo, how can they access that and get credits for that and make sure that we're not letting this generation of our students in rural communities fall behind? She is Arizona's superintendent of public instruction, Kathy Hoffman. And, and you talked about teacher retention. I just wanted to follow up with that as a, as the layman, as the person who maybe doesn't understand it. You know, last year we went through the whole uh, uh, red for ad 20 by 2020. And then, and then there were pay increases for teachers. Yet we still see difficulty in retaining and attracting uh, teachers. H- how How is that going to turn around understanding the money is what it is right now? It's, it's going to take time. And that's what is, I know it's very frustrating even for teachers. It's, it, it takes time for, for these raises to take effect. And it is over the next couple of years that the raises uh, are going to be distributed to our teachers. There's other compounding issues when it comes to the rising cost of health care, which I know I've t- I think I've talked sure. about here before as well. And that's an area we're starting to dig into, um, looking at teacher benefits. Of course, I have always said we need to have paid maternity and paternity leave for our, our young teachers who are starting families to attract and retain them to the profession. Um, it's, so it's, it's really a broad issue. We still have very high classroom sizes, which means high workloads. I would love to see more supports in the classroom, whether that be a teacher aide or even a parent volunteer, just getting more people to support our teachers in the classroom so that they can be, feel successful, feel that they can manage the classroom. But we, but pay is still one of the fundamental yeah. issues that needs to be addressed. Well, fu- pay is a fundamental issue. Classroom size, retaining teachers, all of this comes down to money. And there are a couple of bills that are making their way through the state legislature right now that is trying to not fix, but address it. Huge hole, right? You're not going to fix it overnight. We didn't get here overnight. You're not going to fix it overnight. But there there are there's one bill in particular that would 
change Arizona law and allow schools to redirect sales tax of 0.6 cents for student support systems like counselors, school safety, teacher pay raises, SB 1080. An extra, they're estimating right now, and you know, I'm just throwing this number out there, I realize it can change, $350 million a year for education. And you've got organizations like the Arizona Education Association, lack of a better term, teachers union in the state, um, that are opposed to it. What are your thoughts on these bills? For that one specifically, our department has stayed neutral on it, and because it is asking for a raise in our sales tax, and Arizona does have one of the highest sales tax in the country. I believe we're 11th in the country for highest sales tax. And so I think that's where people are concerned that, and and so we're staying neutral partly because I've always said all options on the table, our schools desperately need the funding, but I think we also need to keep in mind being critical about where that money is coming from. Um, And it seems like we're becoming pretty reliant on our sales tax paying for public schools. So I'm staying neutral. I'm saying that's it's on the table. It's an option. I am looking forward to seeing a spirited debate on that as it continues to go forward, because, of course, funding is a, a serious issue. But I would love to see more options on the table and make sure that that those Um, the cost is more evenly distributed. Is there best practices you can learn from other states? Uh, As a a superintendent of public instruction, I'm assuming you've got 49 new friends, uh, District Columbia, we'll go with 50 of them, I guess, uh, that that have similar jobs. Is there things we can learn from other states and say, well, here's how they've managed to solve this? Absolutely. And and I have been speaking with other state superintendents. But Arizona, we're unique and we like to be unique. We, We have very unique tax uh, formulas and what what taxes people like to pay or don't like to pay. And well, just in general, people don't like to see any kind of rise in taxes. Please tell me the taxes they like paying. I'd be curious (laughs) about that. Exactly. Exactly. So I think while I would love to say, let's look at a state that has astronomically fully funded their public school system. I would love to see that here. Yet, I don't think that's realistic for what our communities and voters are in agreement to. Well, there are many unique aspects to Arizona. One area where we're not unique, schools all across the country, states all across the country are battling it, and that is the mental health of our Mm. young people. Tomorrow, we will be diving deep into this issue from 10 to 11. Join us here, folks, as we take a look at teenagers and the suicide rate particularly in the East Valley that we have been seeing. And and what the state is trying to do about it, we know that the suicide prevention training passed the state Senate. We know that the governor is trying to get more money for additional school counselors. Right now, Arizona has the worst ratio in the country, some 900 students to one counselor. Um, Now that you've been in this position for a little while, Ms. Hoffman, how critical and important is it that we start addressing these issues in our young people. It's incredibly important. It's been absolutely tragic to hear about these student suicides, and we need to be all hands on deck. I fully support all of these efforts to increase the number of counselors in our schools, as well as social workers, any mental health professionals that can support our students in the schools, I think will make a positive difference. And another thing we're doing within the Department of Education is we're strengthening our relationship and partnership with Access because they also have um, state and federal funds that they can utilize where they they want to have more health um, preventative and educational types of professional development for educators and and to provide those professional development opportunities directly to our schools across the state. And so we're partnering on that and I'm helping connect them with the districts that are interested in participating in this type of program. And But yeah, we are all hands on deck to to address the mental health and social emotional well-being of our students. Yeah, and again, tomorrow, at 10 o'clock hour 10 to 11 we're going to have a variety of different experts in here uh to 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 try to first off understand the problem and then talk about some of the solutions yeah because it's a community solution it does not fall solely on the shoulders of the schools to remedy it or or the Mm parents but it is a community issue and i appreciate you addressing it superintendent of public instruction kathy hoffman thank you so much for being here thank you here's our top story KTAR News, 92.3 FM, Arizona's news station.